Well, what are we up to today? Well, the last video you saw these big hulking solar panels added. Um, and in the one before that you saw us add the regulator. So today we're going to terminate our solar leads and we're going to fix up our batteries. We're going to put a major inline battery fuse on here and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, including like solar panel isolation and stuff as well. Um, not sure how far I'm going to get and I've been feeling the pressure a little bit to uh, put these videos out even though they're not getting a lot of views. So um, I'm going to do a lot of this stuff off camera. It's also very windy as you can probably tell so it's going to make videoing kind of difficult. So I'm just going to do some short little clips and join them all together here that show you each step of the process. Um, but for the rest of it I'm just going to get on and uh, do my thing. And I'm pretty sure the first thing I'm going to do here is main battery fuse. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, the first thing I've done here is remove these two leads, um, which go to the charger. So I'm just leaving these big 8 gauge cables to it. And uh, everything in this box, aside from this guy, is going to run off those two 8 gauge leads. And there is an Anderson plug under here that connects these guys. I have to pull all the junk out of here in a bit. Um, so these two the charging and the regulator and the inverter and all that will run off those two 8 gauge wires um, with a couple of bus bars floating around in there um, so I've got these guys off I can pull that wire back that'll clear a hole for the solar wire to come in and hopefully the temperature probe for the solar regulator as well so um, we'll see how we go with that okay we've cleaned all the junk out of here simplified things I've disconnected the main battery using this Anderson plug here. We're going to put our main battery fuse in and I want to put that down here, well out of the way. Um, I'm not sure if these cables are actually going to go into that fuse holder now that I look at it. Um, but I want this down at the battery in case I have some sort of short circuit right up close to the battery. So um, yeah, I'm going to probably chop these wires chop this and join using fuse holder I'm hoping I'm hoping it works and I don't have to put a crimp terminal on there I probably will but we'll see how she goes anyway let's get cracking all right fuse holder installed I did have to double over the copper because these have got a huge um, palatial connections in here designed for much bigger cable um, at a later date I will come along and put a crimp terminal like a boot lace on there and uh, we'll fix that up but for now this guy can sit on top of the batteries we will zip tie this so it behaves itself um, and that fits under the battery cover there that'll be good so now we start some work in here all right so I have solar panel wires through a hole that was already existing I've just enlarged a bit a temperature probe here I know it looks ugly in this box but I'm going to call that a water drain hole um, I can seal them up if I want to but my experience is sometimes these rubber seals are not perfect you get a bit of water in here it's sensible to have drip loops on cables and a drainage hole that's why all this stuff's off the side and up out of the water a little bit if it does get in there um, all right so Got these stripped off, I need to find my isolation switch, which I think is down here. Um, I need to get some terminals on these guys, and um, then we'll get this uh, inverter wired up. Or regulator, sorry, that's the inverter, that's the regulator, that's what we're wiring up. Alright. Alright, so we have our switch, uh, isolation switch connected. Now, before you, before you start ranting about this, the maximum rating of that is about 50 volts and we're going to end up having a 62 volt string so if i do have to isolate it i'm going to be throwing a blanket over the top um, in an emergency uh, i can reach in and turn that off um, but uh, there is the obviously the connector that i've got disconnected up here while i wire everything up that's an option too so this gives me an emergency place to disconnect it in a hurry if i don't have a ladder on me um, but yeah I'm really hoping it doesn't create an arc over if I do that, but again, emergency only. So, um, now I've got to get um, these wires into here, and then I'll work out where I'm positioning the switch in here as well. 
All right, so I have my bus bars installed. Um, we've got the solar connected up. Um, now I've left these as far apart as possible to try and reduce uh, accidental shorts, although I will be probably printing or doing something to insulate at least one of these, most likely this guy, hence why it's closest to the uh, exit door. Now I was going to use some nice big hefty cable like this 8 gauge stuff that I'd originally connected the inverter with, but uh, it seems I've run out of that and it's New Year's Day, so um, I have the next best thing. This stuff is some very hefty copper um, and it's like mostly solid core. It's only probably one gauge below and for the short distance from here to here It shouldn't add a lot of resistance and I think that's still good for about 100 amps anyway, so Yep, we'll run that round um, Anyway, let's keep moving. There's still plenty more to do oh, And this was yeah, this is the cable I was going to use for the inverter or I had been um, Let's find the other end and this is what I'm using now, so yeah, not a lot of difference in size, but for the short distance we should be right. Anyway, let's keep moving. Well, I've been busy since the last clip, and it's windy. I've hooked everything up to the bus bars, I've fitted the isolation switch, the batteries are connected to the regulator, and charges all hooked up, inverters in, um, the batteries are still disconnected for the moment, and I've left these where I can easily access them. 12 volt side um, from the 24 to 12 volt converter. It's going to get put through this. I don't know if I'll do that today. I'm a bit run down, but it's smoke test time for this. Um, and I guess I can't really change the settings till I uh, hook it up. So I'm leaving solar panels isolated. I'm going to hook this up in a moment, and we'll start testing stuff. So yeah, let's see how we go. Alright, smoke test time, here we come. Um, before I do that, I'll just make sure that all reds and all blacks are in the right places. I do have this as positive there, negative there, positive here, negative here. That's good. Making sure red to red and black to black over this side. Last minute, that's off. I just switch on and off. It's isolated at the roof yet. Alright, so let's hook our Anderson up. Big zap. We've got a green light on the regulator showing 25.6 volts that's not too bad wi-fi is flashing we'll turn that on in a minute so i need to change some settings here which means i need to check the manual to find out how to do that so um yeah i'll go consult the manual all right so I found the manual. Now it says here it's detected 24 volt battery. That's good. So we need to push and hold this till we go to a mode. And now um, our first mode is battery type selection. And A is for AGM. Let's ah, so enter and we can change to all these L5 or A. So that is default levels. That is selection that's for AGM so it's set to AGM already that's nice let's see what else we've got second one that's Wi-Fi on we'll leave that on um, load protection voltage it's set to 20 volts we don't really care because it's not using the lighting output um, we've got 25 volt what's this 25 the next one so there's load under voltage recovery setting again not important um, the clock time. So what is our time? I don't know what the time is at the moment. Anyway, um, I'll set that later. Um, time setting. Next page. What have we got? Um, four hours. So the rest of that is fine. We've just sort of set it to AGM, so we're good. So let's just exit out of the settings menu. So we're set for AGM, I think we're safe to connect the solar. Alright, time to hook up the solar. So we're going to turn our isolation switch on first. I'm a little worried that I might have an arc over in that switch. So let's get up the ladder here and join these up. We've got to get around. Should have really used the chest now for this. All 
All right, and we're connected. So what happens down below? Whoop. Turn off the ladder. See, oh, we have a flashing green solar light. And it looks like it's charging. That's nice. Now if only I can get the mobile app to work. All right. Okay, well we've been sitting for about 10 minutes and we're already up over 28 volts, so that's not bad. Certainly some current going in. Um, so, 12 volt stuff's gonna get done at a later date. I am once again sore, tired and buggered, so successful New Year's Day. Time to take a break and go over snooze. Maybe in the back of this. See you in the next one. Hope it was fun.